Hello everyone, Pepe Merola here. And here I am live here on Facebook. Just give me a second. I need to do a, a little setup in some of, some of my options here. Okay. Let's see. Just give me one second. Just be patient. There you go. And here we are. There you go. And I am live right now on Facebook and Instagram. Ta-da! Here I am. Um, I'm a little bit late, but um, it's been a long day for me. I have been teaching since 9 o'clock this morning and had a great time with my uh, students, my fellow drummers out there. We're having a great time, really. Uh, so nice to share some uh, drumming. And the most, you know, the, the joyful thing, what really makes me happy is, is the fact that I see them improving. That's what my joy comes from when I teach. See the way they improve and get better. Now, let's see. I'm gonna make one more. Since my computer is kind of far away from me, I can't read the uh, comments. So I'm going to set up my phone in that way I can read your comment. Please, if you guys have any question, feel free. Feel free to ask me. Um, okay, I see there's one comment already. Oh, okay, see me. Yes, that's great. Hello, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Rosetta Granieri is watching. Hello, Rosetta. Ken, Hassan. Hello, guys. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Uh, peaceful, most of all, with the lots of joy and music, because that's what we need nowadays. Music, really. Um, Give me, a, give me some couple minutes here. That way I can set it up this thing. And uh, start playing some drums and give some uh, free tips to my fellow musicians and drummers out there. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So that's why I couldn't read. That's it. They're right here. Okay. Hello, everyone. Okay. Almost done. Give me a second. Pom, 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 pom. I see some people start watching. So prepare your questions. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Uh, be more than happy to uh, answer your question and help if I can. I also wanted to announce I made the decision about drum group lessons, which I'll tell you in a minute. Let's see. Tell in a minute. In the meantime, if you guys have any question, good afternoon, Bruce. 
I see you. I see you, Bruce. And please share this video on your page if you can. You know, let's help the others. It's very important, guys. I'm doing this for the love of the music, to help other drummers. And we gotta give something, you know. Musicians, we are givers. We just give things. Um, that's the truth. That's, uh, that's what I think. Uh, let me finish to share this one. And then I'm gonna start doing some playing and talk about some drum technique. Again, as you guys can read, tips are accepted, but not required. So if you do, you can, uh, if you want a tip, you can PayPal me at peporijaz at yao.com. Uh, let's see, I, I think I'm almost done here. Yeah. I'm almost done here, I'm done. There you go. Chris De Bernardo is watching. Hello, Chris. Bruce, good afternoon. Hassan, yes. Ken, yes. How you doing? <laughs> Hassan, me, Nazumul Grande. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jeffrey, how you doing? Can you see me okay? Okay, now. Here it is, I'm also live on Facebook, so I will receive book message with this setup from Facebook and and uh, YouTube. I can see that. Yeah. So, like I said, I was teaching this morning all day long, since 9 o'clock this morning, four hours teaching, and I loved it. Now, Um, before I start, um, I need to make the announcement. And yes, I decide from now on, from today on, uh, you guys can enroll to my group lessons. So, which means, uh, since I know exactly that a lot of people can't afford, you know, to spend a lot of money for, you know, single lessons for my, uh, I call it the brainstorm um, drum lesson. I decide to help other people that they can't really afford to, uh, you know, I know many of you guys want to, you know, love to uh, do a one-on-one -on -one lesson. So for the people who can afford, you know, I always suggest the one-on-one, -on -one, not because of something, because one-on-one -on -one lesson, it's like I'm focusing on your technique. Um, it's going to be just you and me on camera. Uh, but for the ones who can't afford to spend that budget, I came up with the idea for the group lesson, drum group lesson. Minimum three people need to uh, uh, subscribe uh, to the plan, to this package. Uh, maximum five people. I could, I could add ten people if I wanted to, to this new uh, platform. But I decide only minimum three people, maximum, max five students for one hour lesson, one hour lesson weekly. So if you, if you subscribe and buy the package, purchase the package for the full lesson, for one hour group lesson, okay, the cost, it's only 160 a month. Or you can take one group lesson and see how it works and will only cost you $40, but, but for one hour, $40 for one hour, but has to be minimum three people, you know, in the classroom. Three people, max five people, no more than that. Because I, at least in an hour I can, you know, answer and look at each and every one of you and pay attention and try to, you know, to give my best to all five of you, all three of you, whatever it is. So, you can inbox me for the information. If you need more info, which I already told you what it is, it's $40 for one hour group lesson. So, minimum three people in the, in the room, in the class. Minimum, max 
five people. So hurry up and book your lesson. Now, with that being said, any questions? Uh, do you guys need any help before I start playing? What did catch? What did catch? I'm going to order the CD and poster with uh, uh, when figure out the PayPal. I, I don't understand, Ken, what did you say? I'm going to order the CD and poster when figure out the PayPal. You gotta do the same thing you did when you uh, purchased the drum lesson. Just, you know, just uh, you got my email, that's very easy. Peporijaz at yao.com and you know and, um, and that's it it's very simple you got to just do the same thing you did when you uh, purchased my uh, lesson same thing same process how do I sign up sign up for what you're confusing me can can now you're confusing me can can <laughs> <laughs> Any tips on working on the weaker hand, which the weaker hand is for you, which one, right, left? Usually, if you're right-handed, the weakest hand is the left one, right? So, okay, I forgot that. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, man, I see a lot of people here writing from... Uh, uh, YouTube so Pepe what sticks do you prefer and why well right now uh, I, I use I use 5a uh, right now I'm using 5a with the night with the nylon tip um, right now but usually 5a can be wood tip or nylon tip I think 5a is a good you know it's a good match that is not too thin or short, it's not too light, it's not that hard to control the rebounds. See? So, 5A wood tip or nylon tip. So. I'm lefty. Okay, so you left hand. Okay. Oh, oh, the group lesson. I just finished to say it. Inbox me. Ken, inbox me about the group lesson. Now, here it is. For the left hand, same thing we do with the right hand. If we can, are you, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question. Are you, do you, you, do you uh, play match grip? Or traditional grip let me know match grip okay so for the match grip you do the same thing with the right, you know, you do with the right hand. So I will suggest four notes per each hand, just using wrist, wrist and fingers. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Same thing with the left hand. Two, three, four, one. And just when you play, try to make a triangle. See? Triangle position. So, but make sure that <laughs> when the right hand is playing, the left hand is up. You keep your left hand up. So, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. This is a size, it looks like easy, but it's not. Uh, why? First of all, I want you to, you know, make sure that you're sitting down nicely and comfortable, you know, if you're practicing your hands, I'm sure you have your pad, practice pad right in front of you. So, 
Make sure you sit down nice and comfortable. And this motion is very important. And just think like, see, we, we're playing quarter notes. Two, three, four. Just pretend on the way back you play the off beat, which is the eighth note. One, and, 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 and. and the reason for that, in that, you know, the reason for that is to have the complete rotation of your wrist, opening of your finger, and then the closing. Okay? And that's when you do it slow. When you do it slowly, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and. See, this motion, the faster we play, the smaller it gets. So, which is one. See, I started like this, and three and four and one and two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. See, the faster I go, I lower my limbs, my hands, lower it. And even this mo motion, the opening and the closing of the hand, hand closing and opening, it gets smaller. So when it's slow, you go like this. But once you play faster, you lower your hands, and even this movement, you know, the, the, the fingers, the opening the fingers get smaller. It's not like that anymore. Okay? Otherwise, we'll be dragging. So, but that's what's going to happen. And then you go back, slow down. You do that with the right hand and with the left hand. This is gonna really help you and reinforce your both hands, you know. That's it. Guys, I smell coffee. I think my wife just made a coffee. Chicha, did you make coffee? I smell the coffee. Hold on, I gotta go get a cup of coffee. Hold on, give me one second. I see some people arriving here. Uh, just curious if, he, if you were a drummer first or a trumpet player first. I was born a drummer. And I'll tell you a story. Hang on for a sec. She, uh, Oriana? Oriana? Yeah. Did you make a coffee? Yeah. yeah, please. I smell the coffee all the way down here. Guys, I'm sorry, but, you know, this is the beauty of, you know, when you go live. Plus, this is, you know, important. I'm Italian. I love coffee. I need to wake up. So, <laughs> let's see. Okay, okay, I got that banner right on my head over there. I just want to make sure that you guys can see me okay. You can see me right. Okay, that's much better. So, I will take a cup of... I know, I know, I know. Here it is, here it is guys. Ah, oi. Ah, nice and uh, hot espresso. Espresso. Uh, to you guys, salud. Mm, mm, mm. This is good. Hey, don't forget my CDs. I got some CDs up. So, here it is. Here they are. My very first CD was Jazz Mediterraneo, which I recorded with some of the best jazz musicians from Naples, Italy. Uh, there's Angelo Aldo Farias, Giovanni Amato, uh, Franco De Crescenzo, Aldo Vigorito on this one. Great record, here 2000. And it's called the Jazz Mediterraneo, Jazz Mediterranean Flair. Most original composition and some standards. 
Then I met one as a singer, when I sing time to say goodbye and to do all the opera stuff. Here it is, Sogno Italiano, Italian Dream, where it features me, features me as a singer, a ranger, I play everything on this record. One man band. One man band. What? <laughs> anyway, this is a good one. And um, then, 2009, Stick With Me, this was the highest breaking for me, the icebreaker in my jazz world, actually. I recorded this record in New York City with some of the finest jazz musicians from New York City. Steve Touré, great drum player from Digital Les Bill Stars Big Band. You guys know who Steve Touré is. Jim Rotundi, great trumpet player. John Farnsworth, great tenor saxophone player, arranger, composer. Mike Ledon on piano. Lee Smith. You guys don't know, but Lee Smith is Christian McBrider's father. So, this is a, I mean, if you listen to Lee Smith playing bass, you will know where Christian McBride got some stuff from, you know. But anyway, a lot of people don't know about this, but here it is. Stick with me, great review, many reviews on any, many jazz uh, drum magazine, many jazz magazines. Stick with me, 2009, Pepe Merola. It is. And my latest one, my latest one is Happy Times, which I'm supposed to be promoting this CD right now. But before COVID, everything, the tour, Mexico, New York, Boston, Philadelphia, Paris, uh, Italy, all over Italy, it's been, everything has been postponed. I'm broke. So that's why I'm teaching full time. But anyway, the music is here. You guys can always order online. Check it out online. It's on Spotify, Amazon, any music web store, music store, you know, a web music store. Purchase that on Amazon and uh, iTunes, everywhere. Or order direct to, directly from me. You can get the old package with an autograph poster. Or you can purchase each individually, you know, through me. It will save you money. So... With that being said, hey, a lot of tours and gigs are canceled. Can't travel, can't go get a gig. So here I am trying to do my best. <laughs> Try teaching and, you know, and promote my music. Um, if I don't do it, nobody's going to do it for me. Hello. So, <laughs> so I need more coffee, don't you think? I want one too. Eric. Uh, oh, you want a coffee? I wish I could have all of you guys close. In that way, I would, you know, I, I swear, I, I wish you guys were close. And that would make like a big, giant, gigantic, you know, coffee machine for everyone and everybody, you know, outside my backyard, play some music, do a barbecue. That would be the best way to celebrate the end of all this mess. COVID then whatever. You know what I'm saying? You dig? Anyways, you dig? You dig? Yes or no? Here it is for Eric that was, he was asking me. Here it is, yeah. I never play trumpet, you know, but... See, that's, you see, that, that, that came for good. That came for good. Why? Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. The fact that me as a drummer, I play another instrument, like trumpet. I play piano. It really, really helps me when I play drums. It helps my drumming. The harmonic here that I develop over the years. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> the harmonic ears that I developed, you know, harmonic, melodic. As a drummer, this really helps, guys. 
knowing a melodic or harmonic instrument, especially harmonic instruments, it's very important. So for who, for the people who don't know, I got my master in classical trumpet, you know, and the reason for that, because in Italy at the time, you know, in the conservatory in Italy, we had no jazz drum set, jazz music, forget it. Now they do, now they have the jazz faculty and, you know, in fact, I do a lot of master class every time I uh, go to Europe. But at the time when I graduated, which was like 1987, they only uh, teach, you know, classical music. And I got my classical degree in trumpet at the Conservatory of Music San Pietro and Maiella, which is one of the oldest, one of the oldest conservatory of music in the world. So, now you guys know a little bit of me and my background. So, it took me seven years to get my degree in classical trumpet, but my degree... I cannot use it here in the United States because it's not recognized. But the funny thing is, since I'm taking some classes, getting another degree eventually, uh, which will allow me to uh, apply to be a teacher in different colleges and universities or whatever, um, I realized that in the music history, right, class, they are saying European system, the, the European music was the, were the very first people who brought the notation and the music and the harmony, bada boom and bada bam, bada beam, bada boom. So now I say, wow, you guys think that European music and knowledge, it's all it's so great. How come you don't recognize my degree? Anyway, close parentheses, forget about it. Let's play the system, whatever they do, whatever they want, I'm here, you know. Um, that's why I decided to go back to school and finish, you know, Classes that I, that, that I already did when I was 16. Now, oh, love your home play. Thank you, Ken. So here it is. Again, we talk about the first rock for each hand. Exercise for uh, bruise actually. Bruise, are you, are you still there? Okay. Now I see people here. I'm sorry if I miss somebody, but I need to answer other people here. Uh, just because. Uh, 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 Robert uh, Gugliotti is watching too. Hello. Um, any tip for working uh, with your hands? Stay loose and higher tempo. At higher tempo. Okay, stay loose. And that's what. See, I already answered this question. I already answered that question right there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about one part of the one, excuse me, one rudiment for now. So I might give up, you know, I'll give out two or three tips today, which that can be very helpful for you guys. Um, if you guys are familiar with the rudiments, because, you know, I'm sure you do. Some people are, like I know Jeffrey is. I saw him playing Sing, Sing, Sing. He sent me a video, and hey, sounded great, by the way. Swinging your butt off, man. It sounded wonderful. Um, uh, Ciao, amico mio, tutto bene? Ciao, Enzo, tutto benissimo, grazie. Oh, see, my dear friend Enzo from Italy, he's on right now. He's still awake. <laughs> Well, it's Saturday night anyway. So, paradido. It's a combination of single, double, stroke roll. Now, para, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Okay? I usually, what I do, what I do, oh, Jeffrey, I go paradido, 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 paradido. Try to play every note equally, with no accent at all, okay? Let me charge, let me charge this. One second. One second. Okay. 
Here we are. Okay. So. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. You got to play it very comfortable. You got to be very comfortable. Put yourself, you know, with slippers, shorts, whatever you want to do, underwear. <laughs> no, just kidding. Come on. So, para tu. Okay? Then you do quiet. Then what I will do with this, I will do this. I'm going to play it first and then say it. I can't talk and play at the same time. It's kind of hard. Hold on. Um, I'm playing triplets. Then I go up to 16. So, paradido. Then you go double time. Triplets. This is it. This is gold, guys. Right here. This is gold. And I'll tell you why. Okay? And I'll tell you why. And trust me. I mean, any question I'm here, you can always, you know, not wearing underwear. Oh, man. That's just, you know, come on, man. <laughs> Rafael, hello. Hello, Rafael. Again, you're funny, Ken. You're funny, cat. So, I tell you why this exercise is, to me, is gold. First of all, because if you practice paradiddle like this with the metronome, that's what's happening now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See, this will help you to start subdividing double time already. Then, then you subdivide the triplets while you're playing this. Then you go back. Then you go up time.
is a wonderful feeling, guys. This is great. You know, this will reinforce your internal timing as well. At a certain point, I play just para you will see the same sticking. Double time. Three cuts. Twenty second note. Sixteen actually. And then I went to this. Triplets right there. See, this is just a wonderful way to exercise and work on just the paradiddle. But that can be any rudiments. You can also, you know, move the accents around. Paradiddle. So the accent on the first. Then on the second, on the third, and on the fourth, which is this. On the third. On the fourth. One. So all together will be this. Back to one. Uh, let's see. Here. You do two bars each, okay? And then you change the accent. So two bars on, on and then you change. Two ready go. Now change. Last one. And then you do the same thing twice. Guys, I'm waiting for you guys if you guys have any, have any questions. It looks like I'm just talking here and showing stuff. But you know, again, don't feel, don't feel guilty. Please, if you have any question, if you don't understand something, I'm here. Okay, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy by the 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 the, the, the banner that says you know tips are accepted but not required. You know, PayPal me at peporijas at yahoo.com. Don't be shy by that. Like I said, tips are required. Uh, tips are accepted, but not required. So, ask me the question. I'm here to help. Okay? So, one, two, three. See, I made a mistake now. 
Let's see, I got shot enough. I'm angry now, I made a mistake. Hey, I made a mistake. Don't you think that's great? Yeah. <laughs> I love when I make a mistake, you know, because I get so pissed. <laughs> anyway, well, who's that? Which book are you working out of for this exercise? Jeffrey, it's all me. It's all me right now. Paradido. There's so many ways we can work on paradiddles. We can play paradiddle. You know? There's so many ways. You know? Um, so, and the more we know, the more we say. This is something, you know, I got to say it, and it's, that's the truth. You know, I'm going to just give you an example of this just for one second. I'll show you something. I got to move the camera for a second. Let's see if you guys can see the drum set. I think you can now. Yeah. Okay. Here, here it is. Uh, I'm not even going to bring my snare or the chair, but I'm going to just show you what you can do. What you can do. Okay. Just with the double straw roll. So this double stroke roll. Okay? Now, we can work on different rudiments, getting involved feet, hands, you know. For example, double stroke roll, left hand, and bass drum. jazz music me about let's see okay yeah I guess you can see let's see I lost audio anyone else can you hear me okay Oh, got it back. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, in your uh, a personal opinion, do you recommend that it's important to learn how to read drum? I think it's very important to learn how to read music, period. Like I said before, if you're a drummer, you know, I will always suggest I would always suggest to um, to learn a melodic instrument, piano, trumpet. To be able to play piano and read, you know, the music theory, you got to know the chords, triads, intervals, all that stuff, you know. Uh, I think it's very important. So now, like I said, with the, with, the, with the rudiments, in this case it was paradiddle and double stroke roll. And see, what I did, I was, I was not even sitting down, I just sat down and I played it. 
Okay? Oh, Siri, shut up. That's, that was my Siri. All of a sudden, just like, she decided to talk to me. <laughs> now, any other questions? How are we from Columbia, Georgia? Robert Kane. Robert, how are you, Robert? So, Uh, we did that on Paradiddle. Any other questions? In the meantime, think about your question, and I'm going to have a zip of water. And for the new people who are just getting connected now, you can get it through me or Amazon or any web music store. Four CDs out, check it out. You can get them individually, or can, you can get the package or four CDs plus an autograph poster from me, and that will save you money as well. Um, let's see. By the way, I'm I'm in South Africa. Beautiful man, that's wonderful. <laughs> Chris Thomas, discuss left hand traditional push and pull, please. Please. Okay, Chris, first of all, hello. How are you? How are you, my friend? So, hear this. Uh oh, hold on, I'm getting messages here on, the, on, the, on my phone, on Facebook, and YouTube. People writing over there like mad. Well, I might answer them afterwards, don't you think? Don't you think? Don't you think? Anyway. So, first of all, let me explain and take this out of the way. I was about to explain the Mr. Hyatt sticking. That's like a tip that only a mm, few people can really give up there. And the reason for that is because... Uh, Oh, I, don't you think I'm doing great? I love what I do. You know, whatever it is, it's a very hard time right now. But the only way to see it is with a smile on our face, full of happiness. Friends, try to give something to people like right now. I'm doing this for you guys. You know, that's all. That's all I got left. And a lot of people, they might don't do it. They might stay home or they might, you know, I like to talk to people. I like to have people around me. I, I can't wait that this COVID and all this BS is going to be over with. In that way, we can all get together again and have a great time. You know, I can't wait to go out there and meet my friends and talk and play music and, and travel again, you know, and be able to, to see my friends, my parents, my fans, whatever, you know. I love that idea. So, and that's one of the reasons why I said I need to get organized here. I need to get online. I need to have my own show. I need to do lessons. I need to do this. I need to talk about my CDs. I, need, I, am, I, I have to do something. Can't go out and get gigs. You know, but anyway, I, we said that before. So, here it is. Now, push and pull technique with the left hand. Now, are you familiar... Thanks, Ken. Are you familiar with a push and pull? What's your name again? Chris. Are you familiar with Because a lot of people, they ask me, hey, can you talk about push and pull? But there is a lot to talk about push and pull. It's not that in one second you got it. There's many ways. You know, the, the way you hold the stick, how to get the finger work. Like if you don't have a good finger control, and rest the finger control, there is no way in the world that you will ever play, you will never play a push and pull technique. Okay?
just he let the the out go. Yes, right hand is good. Okay, perfect. So with the left hand then, here it is. If you have a good fulcrum, drop it. Pull. Snap it. Drop it. Snap it. Drop it. Snap it. So, a good way to practice with the left hand, push and pull, would be this. The right hand is good. Okay, so okay. Now you're telling me if the right hand is good. So if you can play this, your left hand feature on push and pull, which is the right hand. So I would suggest you to practice push and pull with both hands, avoiding flams. So you go like this. Hard. Then you start alternating like this. So you start alternating different strokes, four to eight strokes per each hand, and then eight, and then you do one bar, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, push a pull, and that way you can relax nicely, as long as you can, left hand. get to a certain speed and then can go any faster so that's why I am showing you right now how to practice you know hey I know this technique very well and still practicing and working on it it's a work in progress work in progress so what I'm trying to say is you know there's no way no perfect guy that, you know okay I got it and never give up the hope of doing better never think you are done practicing I am 50 years old I spend my days my life I've been spending my life my days on the instrument and the thing is the reality is I give those tips out to help out but at the same time, I also know that, and I gotta say it, you guys, some of you guys out there, no, you know, I'm, I'm talking in general, because there's people out there that they are technically prepared and they know certain things in order to move forwards. 
There are people out there that they think they know everything, but they will never get it down for the simple reason because they got some issues, technical issues, that they don't know because their teachers or their coach or their friends never told them about it. That's why I feel like, you know, cold blood, when it comes down to drumming, you know, I got so many, I got my butt kicked every week from my teacher. You know, every week I got my butt kicked like this. Boom! I was like, oh my goodness, that hurts, you know? So I went home and I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and I practiced. So, uh, huh. we keep it, at it, my friend. What, what's that? Yes. Yeah. So what I'm saying is never give up. Just practice, practice, practice. Nobody ever got to a point and said, I'm the perfect drummer and I know everything. Because I can assure you, I can show you at, with, a, with a blink of an eye that I can make some people and they can make me feel uncomfortable on something that I never did maybe or a new thing for me. And that's great, because when that happens, see, that's a lesson right there. That's a drum lesson, piano lesson, trumpet lesson. This is the real lesson right here. This is what it makes us a good student. When you see someone that knows something or shows you something or plays something, you gotta be able to call the guy, ask him for lesson, and learn. Because this, the fact that you're learning something from somebody, okay, doesn't mean that you play like him or you want to be better than him. No, because it might be that your musicality can take his technique, those inputs that you get from him, and make it yours and develop your own drumming, develop your own, your own phrases. Nothing, there is nobody on the planet, even nowadays, you name any drummer you want, no one invented anything, technically speaking. The great Steve Gett, the master Steve Gett. You know, he did not invent the new rudiment. He invented his own way of playing drums, which that's the main point at the end. But in order for him, or Peter Eskin, or Wackel, or Buddy Rich, or whatever, to do that, for them to do that, they need to know the instrument inside out, and they need to practice. We all need to practice every day and try to learn something here. You know, and the good news is that the more we practice, the more we practice, the better we get. The more we, you know, we are, you know, we are going to uh, increase our vocabulary. You know, our vocabulary gets bigger, and we can express ourselves musically even better. The more you know, the more you say on the instrument. So, don't be shy to ask for lessons, questions. Actually, take advantage of this right now. I'm doing this for you guys, not only, not just for me. I'm doing this for you guys, you know. Uh, and this is all, those are free tips. But at the end, I also know that if I show you, that's what it is. Doesn't mean that you got it. You see the, the motion, you see what I'm doing right now. But you need that guy over there who's gonna look at your hands while you're playing and say, look, your fingers are making the wrong movements. You need to control your finger in order to get this going on. So if you don't know how to play this, for example, or this, for example, you will never be able to play this. There's no way in the world. This or vice versa. So what I did right now, this is like a combination between, between, <laughs> between 
Muller, snap at the end, and push and pull. So which what I did, I came up with this idea six months ago, and I'm still working on it. It's going to take me at least another year and a half, maybe two years to really absorb it. In other words, I try to connect those three techniques together. So I'm going to, this is something like really advanced right now for advanced students or for people who doesn't know it, they want to learn. Here I am, uh, you know, my gigs are canceled. COVID, anyway, so here it is. So you drop free stroke control. In this case, I'm talking about five notes with one hand. If I can play three notes, I can play four, then I can play five, right? So this is what I call the rebound control. Thank you, love you. I love you too, Chris. This is what I call free, you know, free stroke control, rebound control. Because playing drums, knowing the technique is not other than knowing how to control the rebounds. We got to be in command of controlling rebounds. So, five stroke roll. Okay, Eric, you have a wonderful night, my friend. Take care. So, five stroke roll. So the basic starts from here. You guys, I, I don't know how many of you guys are watching right now. Send me a message, say, here I am, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Otherwise I'll just like say goodbye and leave. Anybody's watching right now? Yes, they are. So this phone here, just give me the wrong. Let's see. See, those are the messages from uh, YouTube. YouTube is kicking ass. Excuse my French. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It looks like nobody wants to talk. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, Jeff is still there. Glenn, Edward, hello, hello. So, five stroke roll. How to obtain this? By controlling the rebounds of the stick with a snap at the end. Then, Thank you, Jim. So you here? Okay, perfect. I'm listening. Okay, good. The rebounds, controlling the rebounds. So at the fifth note, the five, I play the snap at the end. But I keep this motion like I want to play two eight notes. One and two. I did, I took this technique, this rudiments, then on the catch at the end, at the very last note, I drop the stick right away and activate push and pull. So, so. Now 
what I did is I'm still working on it. Check this out. So that's those are the first two steps. The five stroke, the push and pull, and then the side swap. So, so what I do with two hands that can be done with one hand using this technique. So, do I make sense? Do you like that? Do you guys like that? Please tell me, do you like that? Do you like that? I do. I mean, I do. <laughs> so, it's a great feeling, you know. When you work on something and, and, and it comes to you, you feel like, you know, you know I want to give a big pat on my head, on my, you know, on my shoulders, say, man, I'm doing, I'm doing a good job, you know, and I feel good about it, you know. And I want the feeling that I, you know, I want the same feeling for you guys. So... But now, for me to get to this point, let's go back. Because the only way to move forward is, you, is for you to know what happened before. What it leads you to, leads you to this type of you know, technique and apply and play all different techniques and work them up in a certain way. So, today we talk about Single. We talk about double. Okay? And we talk about the paradigm. We also talk about different, you know, polyrhythm, different rhythm using the paradigm sticking. Okay? Um, we also talk about Moving the accent, just using paradigm. One, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, four, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two. Okay? So the reason why I wanted to talk about the single first. And the double. is because that's what the para diddle is. Combination between para, single, diddle, double. So if you have a good single stroke roll and a good double stroke roll, you're going to have a great para diddle. Okay? So, last exercise before I go. Please uh, uh, share this video with, on your page with other people, let's try to spread the news, uh, help, help other drummers, you know, you guys are watching, but I'm sure your friends, other drummers, they might want to watch, so if I'm doing this for free, you guys can share the video, trust me, again, don't get intimidated, you know, tapes are accepted, but not required, and you can PayPal me at the polyjazz at yahoo.com, check out my CDs, I hope this video was helpful to you guys, for many of you guys out there, to uh, improve your technique. If you guys have any question, please inbox me and check out my online drum lessons. Check out my website at www.pepemarola.com. Uh, check out my YouTube channel, which there are a lot of videos there, concerts, gigs, you know, performances. Let's see here. My teacher studied with Morello. He never taught me the push and pull per se. What are you, what are your best lessons with him? What are your best lessons with him then that you remember? Drinking. <laughs> so it's a funny story, I gotta tell you. Um, 
John Morello never really gave me a lesson. I met someone who knew John Morello, 1996. That's a funny story. I'm gonna say this because this is a, it's a funny story to, 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 to tell. It's a story tell. So, 1996, when I moved here to the United States, uh, I was start gigging in, you know, first of all, I moved here in California, very first time. Before I went, you know, after that, I went to Vegas for, a couple, for some years, you know, and then New York City for 12 years, and then back to California. But, <clears throat> 1996, I was start gigging around, and there was a place in San Jose, uh, a very good place, jazz club actually it was in the casino called garden city and there was a great pianist playing there which uh, uh rest in peace he's no longer with us but he really left in me some great memories you know um i know you know that who the good peoples are and he was one of those good people really the great smith dobson great piano player from the bay area Santa Cruz, exactly. So I think it was from the San Jose, and then he moved to Santa Cruz. But anyway, um, in uh, <laughs> in uh, Garden City, there was this man, you know, always looking at me, look at my, looking at me every time I was gigging there, I was playing there. So one day he just couldn't, you know, do it. He came close, this man, you know. You remind me of Buddy Rich, you remind me of this. I was like, wow, you know, I, I was just fresh out of the booth. You know, I, first of all, I never saw myself and I never think of myself being as good as Buddy Rich. You know, I just like practice. I don't even touch Buddy Rich. He's untouchable to me. Uh, you know, and I, I just want to be me when I play. You know, I might suck or not, but I want to be Pepe. You know, that's all, that's all I can say. I get inspired from many greatest drummers, but, you know, I want to be Pepe. I'm sorry. When I do something, when I do my stuff, it says, that sucks, but this is Pepe. Yeah, he sucks, but I know that's Pepe, though. Because that's very important. So, but that's another story. Let's move on. So, this guy talked to me. He was telling me that he was friends with John Morello. And I says, man, I'd love to meet him. And I thought he was living in the Bay Area at the time, which it was not true. He was in New York, uh, living actually in uh, Arlington. In, uh, excuse me, yeah, in Irvington, New Jersey, that's where his apartment was. Uh, he was teaching in West Orange, New Jersey. So, to make long story short, uh, I convinced this guy and I, Gil and I, his name was Gil, he also, you know, made the transition a long time ago, uh, 19 years ago exactly. Um, so, he hooked me up with John Morello. John Morello says, yeah, I'll teach him some, you know. So, I remember I was fresh fresh out of the boat in a way, you know, I was just arrived from Italy, like three or four months, you know, uh, in the United States, so I was like, man, I'm going to meet John Morello, so I uh, booked myself a $500, I'll never forget that, $500 a airplane ticket, hotel, taxi, you know, plus at the time, Joe was asking for, I think it was $150 per lesson at the time. So I went, I went to, uh, to New Jersey. I met Joe Morello. He was teaching at the music store upstairs. So I got in there, and the first thing he's, a he's asking me is like, all right, Pepe, man, Gil told me, because this friend of mine from California who used to watch me in the club told him about me. So he was like, Gil told me that you can play, man. Why don't you play a solo? So I, you know, I wanted to really give everything I got, you know. I was so excited to play, you know, in presence of John Morello. I said, man, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to play. I was like, man, this is like, I was so excited. Uh, happy and excited because, you know, I always loved Joe's playing. Uh, I was, well, I'm still one of his best, you know, besides friends, I want to be his best fan. You know, I, I mean, I love John Morello, Buddy Rich, Art Blake, you know. Anyway, let's not talk about those people. But, um, the... Um, I stopped playing a Griswold and then, and then Joe, which he was almost blind, he was looking at me through his glasses, you know, like, hey man, are you using double pedal? And I was like, no, you only have set up one pedal here. 
I didn't bring any pedal with me. Oh, okay, no, because you sound like Virgil Donati. You sound like Virgil Donati with one pedal. And so I played this solo and Joe was very like happy, you know, he was very happy with my playing. I was happy too, I, was, I got so excited. I was keep on playing like, you know, like the cops were outside waiting for me. <laughs> in, in other words, I'm gonna faint on a drum set until he's gonna pick me up from the floor and say, man, that was great. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, huh. um, and Joe, then he asked me, he showed me Master Studies, one of his book, uh, and he said, do you know this book? Uh, let's see here, hold on. Uh, yeah. And you are the Pepe, with two P's in the middle, Pepe, two P's. Pepe Le Pew is not me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, thank you. Um, but anyway, so I played, uh, and then he showed me the, the, the master studies, you know, his book, and I said, man, I know this book inside out, and I told him, I says, because I started, you know, with, uh, this, the uh, master studies with, with my teacher in Italy, plus, I told him, I says, page 73 and 74, I have a book, I'm writing a book about those two pages, you know, I created many ways to execute those two pages, which involves also push and pull, uh, feeds, head, you know, it's amazing what I came up with, really, polyrhythms, you know, it's like, Unbelievable to me, you know, it might be not unbelievable to you guys. I'm not trying to sell anything here or forcing you to buy my book, but my book is not out yet. So take your time, take it easy, <laughs> take it easy because when the book is going to be out, I'm going to brainstorm you about my book because I know that can help a lot of people's drumming. So, and I show it to Joe. And Joe was like, can you read? So I start reading something that he gave me a chart. So I start reading stuff and I have no problem. I could read first time reading, no problem. See, 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 that's the reason why I always say, musicians, upcoming drummers, take piano lesson, trumpet lesson, theory, uh, harmony, composition, just deal with notes, deal with music because it will make your drumming more musical, melodic, and that will classify you, will make you, you know, will put you to a different level of a drummer, believe it or not. I guess. So, <clears throat> to make long, to make long story short, I played those two pages, I read something, and it was like, and it was like, man, that's tough. And I said, man, you are tough. You really, you know. And he was like, let's go out for a drink. So he took me across the street from the music store. There was a, uh, I think it was a bar. Yeah, it was a bar actually. And um, we ordered some chicken wings, some to eat. And of course, he said, my usual to the bartender, which was whiskey cognac, Canadian soda, and you know, Canadian whiskey, Canadian, Canadian whiskey. That's what he was drinking. And Joe was drinking all the time. You couldn't even tell. He could have drink the whole bottle of whiskey. You don't even know that he was drinking because he was so used to that, to be, I don't want to say drunk, but anyway, to be drunk, <laughs> that, that for him drinking whiskey was like drinking water. It wouldn't even do anything to him anymore. Um, <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, the, and then since then, we used to talk on the phone all the time, on a daily basis, with him and Jean, his wife Jean. Uh, we became very close friends. Actually, he was asking me to leave. He was uh, thinking of living in New Jersey. At the time, I was, I went back, and I was living in uh, Vegas, and I was trying to get him in Vegas, get him buying a house in Vegas, right next to me. Uh, our idea was to open a school together. You know, that's what we got, you know. And then I decided to move to New York City. And, you know, and um, because for my career, uh, I can go to Vegas now because I, now I got some connection. I'm Pepe, I'm the, the, you know, through the internet and the media, Instagram, or YouTube. I can be, I can live anywhere. People, you know, I can still promote myself and travel and do my gig, you know. But at the time, you got to be in the right place at the right time. 
So New York, I had to move from uh, West Coast and I went to New York. So we got close and we were, you know, getting together a couple of times a week, two, three, but just to hang out on the phone every day. I was in the car driving from uh, Yardley, Pennsylvania to New York City on the, on the phone with John Morello and his wife. What are you doing now? I, All right, man, where are you going, man? What are you playing tonight? Why don't you come and pick me up and I come with you, you know? And anyway, so my best experience with Joe was talking to him. He taught me a lot of stories, you know. Uh, he told me that he used to share a studio, a studio apartment with Buddy Rich when they were first coming up, you know, him and Buddy. And I also know why, you know, Joe <laughs> got into a, uh, into a Mulder technique. Into this one, because I tell you this, another little, another little story, you know, very little one, because at the time when Buddy was practicing, he already knew about the push and pull. In fact, there is a, a video of Buddy Rich on YouTube that you see him play 16 notes on the hi hat. And the right hand is improvising on the set. C, 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 C. Eye opening. I can talk about my days and stories and fun and laugh and jokes about Morello, Mickey Brooker, and many other greatest, greatest, you know, some of the greatest drummer on the planet for days, guys. I was very lucky and I am very lucky to to know a lot of great musicians and drummers out there. And I learned from all of those guys. I did, I did. Even though they never wanted to give me lesson, this is the truth, they never want my money. They never wanted my money. I wanted to pay them. They never want my money. So maybe that's the reason why I'm here. You know, because, you know, I did everything on my own. Nobody ever did it for me, except for the big ones. Because the people with big art are the deepest musicians, the best musicians, you know, on the planet, except few of them, they all got a big heart. And they are a givers, like Mickey Rooker. Check out on YouTube, Mickey Rooker, drummer for Dizzy Gillespie, Lee Morgan, you name it. Uh, Modern Jazz Quartet. And he was a dear friend of mine. He, we, used to, we used to be neighbor. He used to come to my house. We used to have the Tuesday night, the, the, the boys night, with the great Mickey Rooker. And he was telling me all the stories about Ron Carter, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Miles, and Lee Morgan, and Freddie Hubbard, and Modern Jazz Quartet. You know, anyway, I was very lucky to be surrounded by those great musicians. Other than that, I'm gonna hang up now. I'm gonna go, I'll leave you guys alone. I think I talked too much, but I, I wanted to uh, share some of the stories with you, some of, my, some of my drumming, check out my record, my website, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, check out my records, you can also purchase them from me. And again, tapes are accepted, but not required. You can tip me, you can PayPal me at peporijazzatyow.com. If you don't, it's okay. I'm looking forward to see you next time. Peace and love, and check out my online music lessons. Check out my online music lessons, www.pepemarola.com. Much love, Pepe. Bye.